Hey y'all, today we have another familiar face. Last time she was on was uh, before or during the World Series. It was a great time, kind of magical time. It was all a blur, if you, especially if you're like a multiple Phillies team. You know, you had the, the side-by-side with like the Phillies in the World Series. And, and then you had the Eagles playing like a Thursday night football game. Like and the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles during that crazy time period in life were like the B team on <laughs> that evening and that kind of speak to how crazy last year was but uh Lauren how, how are things going you're over at Roto uh Roto Roto Baller, Baller. yeah Roto Baller and Yard, and Yard Barker. Barker yeah yeah tell the people it's about those are our mouthful so tell the people <laughs> about <laughs> um so over at Yard Barker I'm a sports editor so I edit articles on all sports um and I also write occasionally for Rotoballer. Uh, they primarily focus on fantasy baseball, so I write fantasy baseball articles, sometimes baseball news articles. But um, yeah, so they, those have been working out well. So you, so you play. Uh, it's funny because I usually don't run into people who also play fantasy baseball. I do like three or four teams a year. It kind of helps me like stay up on what's going on. And uh, I actually just had guys. I just had my draft last night. So <laughs> nice. That's how I found out first about Trey Turner like years and years ago. Like you kind of scrape, you kind of constantly scrape the free agent pool, and then Trey yeah. Turner was like this crazy good like. You know, a guy who could like hit for average, and if he got on base, he was stealing, you know, three bay, four bases over the course of a week. I'm like, okay, I'm keep I'm stashing these guys. It's yeah. baseball, baseball is fun. It gets a bad rap, but yeah. So you play, you play every year. So I just started playing last year, and I then I was not in the same league that I was in last year, so I started my own. Um, so I started it with, a, nice. you know, some people from nice. Philly's Twitter, um, and some other like family and friends. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited. Cool. Um, I loved playing it last yeah. year. Um, like I do it for fun, but I'm also competitive about it. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like with all, <laughs> with all fantasy sports, you come to about halfway like the all-star break and there's like three or four teams who've like completely like just folded they don't even they don't even like fix their lineups and yeah they've got people in their pitching roles you got to change the starting pitching and the relief pitchers you got to this it's fantasy baseball is totally different i mean it's even more intense than fantasy basketball. Fantasy basketball is every day, but at least if you set your lineup that day, you're you're fine. But with fantasy baseball, you got to check in like two, three times a day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. People will, and I'm you'll have always that, those like, slots filled, but then guys will be like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> like I'm always yeah. making moves. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so sad news on the Reese Hoskin front. Uh, so, do you think that the Phils are going to be able to 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 make it happen with Derek Hall, or, or are they going to be? You you hope or think that they're going to be doing something there in terms of free agent signings or trades or something? So, I was pretty much like, I still am inconsolable when it comes to the Reese news. Um, I saw it happen live, you know, like when he got the injury and I did not think it was going to be a torn mm. ACL. Um, I was hoping it was just like a strain that looked worse than it was at the time. Um, so I'm obviously heartbroken because I'm a big Reese person. And, you know, it's also possible that this, you know, last season could have been the last time we saw him in a Phillies uniform, which I it's hard for yeah, me to accept. Um I do have faith in Derek Hall. He's had a good spring. Um, He cannot hit lefties, so I'm sure that they will either work on that with him more or they will, you know, try to trade for someone. Um, But it's looking right now like it's going to be a platoon, and I'm not too concerned about it. I mean, Hoskins and Hall, they both hit for power. Um, so, I mean, I I have faith in Hall. Um, obviously, it's hard to replace Reese, especially with what he brings to the clubhouse um, and all 
you know, all the guys were saying that um, it's going to be hard to replace that. But in terms of like his offensive production, I mean, I don't think it'll be too like drastically different. Um, so I think okay. I think it'll work out, even though, you know, this was not an ideal situation at all. <laughs> No, no, he was totally he was totally part of Red October last year. I mean, you can't have, oh, you know, all of it where he had the ugly moment at first base. It kind of blew the game. And then, you know, the next game he comes out and hits the bomb and slams the bat. I mean. Exactly. Yeah. He's like forever in Philly sports fans hearts. I mean, even for the good and the bad. And that's kind of how we like we like our guys with, the you know, uh, you know, rough around the edges and kind of kind of like to pick on these guys but you know who knows yeah, maybe I mean, maybe things work out in a way that that allow him to come back to philly because of this i i hope so i mean it's hard to picture him with another team um and i also think a lot of people that you know mm -hmm. criticize him a lot will realize like what he brings to the team like in you know absence makes the heart grow fonder like i think that's gonna Absolutely. be like this situation <laughs> so no question Especially with Harper out too, until you know June, July, hopefully sooner. I mean, you hear people. The more people, more people talk about it. it sounds like that you know the people keep you know try to bid it down to opening day. I've been hearing you know like Larry Boa came out the other day and was talking about there's no way he's get you know it's going to take him to the All Star break. I kind of get really worried about that kind of stuff because you know you don't want him to kind of push it too hard and then get back and then re-aggravate and be done for the whole year. Exactly. You know? I actually was just talking about that. Um, and especially with the Reese injury, like I could see him trying even harder to like get back sooner, but it's just like, please just focus on healing. And then, you That's know, right. come back when you're ready. <laughs> we know who you're going to be when you get back. I mean, there's no question about who Bryce Harper at this point in yeah. his career, the man is just, He's just one of those special generational baseball players. And exactly. Now the only the only question is is how long can he string together health? But he is great at bouncing back from injury and just being the same guy. It's like unreal. Cause he's had a number of injuries. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I also am very eager to get him back into right field, but you know, Me obviously too. when he's feeling hundred percent to put him back out there but i mean thank god for the universal dh because we would have lost two years of bryce harper if the dh did not come to the the national league which is crazy to think about oh my gosh and, and that would have been so much money sunk into bryce harper yes that you can't <laughs> exactly it would have been devastating so i mean thank goodness <sighs> Wow. I, I haven't even thought about it like that, but yeah, you're right. You know, these last two years, he would have been unusable because yeah, there's no position where you can hide people. I guess you could do like the extreme, I guess you could do like extreme shifting where you could do the shifting and like, you could make it so that he basically never gets hit the ball. Like you have him like out like <laughs> along the foul line. On yeah. Like, and now they, now they can't even do that because the shift fan. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Do you think that the shifting is part of the game or what do you think? Um, I mean, sometimes I think the shift was a little like dramatic. Um, I think yeah, it was. that's like the oh, reason yeah. it led to this ban because I feel like teams like almost took it too far. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, but now I think they went to the other extreme where it's like, you know, um, like when you're watching the game now, the, the shortstop is always in the frame because they can't go into the outfield like they have to be along the line of the uh the diamond it's a little so too much just, yeah you're right they yeah, overcorrected like, it i feel like you could still you know shift like a little bit just not as drastic as it was um but i mean i'm all for improving baseball in any way but there are certain things mm -hmm. like the i'm not a big fan of the pitch clock um I was going to ask you of, about that. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of Tell things the people, I feel like about the new role. And, and give the people a quick a quick uh, a quick primer on it if they they're not big into baseball like us. Tell the people what the new uh proposal was. It well, proposal, it's the new rule. It's the way it's being played now. Yeah, so I mean the batter has to be in the box with 
I believe it's eight seconds to go for the pitch clock. Like the pitcher and the batter have to be ready or they will get a pitch clock violation. Um, and we've already seen in spring training that it's it has affected it. I mean, that people have gotten pitch clock violations. Um, and I think it's... Um, I'm forgetting the exact numbers, but when the batter is in the box, they get, I think, 15 seconds when there's no runners on and then 20 okay. when there are runners okay. on. Yeah. So what's the pitch I, clock violation? So, so I think it's like if they're, the not, they're not in the batter's box in time. There's also di- – I'm still learning myself, like – Cause there have been certain things where I'm like, why, you know, why was that, you know, you get an automatic strike if you get a pitch clock violation. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, or wow. depending on who it's on, like, cause it could be on the pitcher or the batter, but if it's on the batter, then you get a pitch, you get the pitch clock violation and you get a strike called against you. Um, and I've been seeing way more bo- box called too during spring training. Mm. Which I feel like you never used to see box. Now there's going to be like a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of people's motions that are very bulky, but you know, there's already so I don't know that... <laughs> that had to change like their whole and like base yeah. like batters and pitchers, especially pitchers, are so routine oriented that it's like yes, I can't imagine that they had to change like their whole flow. I'm sure they were not happy about it. <laughs> there are some people who like for some people that's going to be it's it. You know, if you've been working from a certain motion for 20 years since you were, you know, 11, 12 years old, and now you've been, had some success in the league, and now you got to change your whole motion, this is going to be drastic for people. People's are ERAs in some cases are going to they're they're going to probably get sent down to Double A ball. Sometimes <laughs> you're going to see some of that this year for people. So yeah, uh, you put up a tweet today. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, it was um, it, they said Atlanta or the Mets uh, lineups, and you said Phillies. But seriously, <laughs> uh, which one of those two do you? The Mets or the 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 Braves? Which one would would you rather be? Probably the Braves. Honestly, um, mm-hmm. the Braves just always seem to put it together, no matter Absolutely. what. Yeah. Um, the Mets. I mean. Don't get me wrong, you know, I don't like to compliment the Mets in any way, but you know, don't get me wrong, they have they have a nice lineup for sure. They but, do. They do. Um, the Braves just they always seem to put it together. And especially if Ronald Acuna Jr. has, you know, a better year. Um, not that he was bad last year, but he still wasn't like who, who yes. he was. Um, who he can be, I should say. He so took I a step that- back. Yeah. A step back for him is a lot better than everybody on everybody's team. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I, they just always seem to put it together and win, you know, 90, 95 plus games every single year. (laughs) Um, So I'm probably going to take them, but you know, the Mets have a, a talented lineup too. You taking the Braves to win the division? Um, (laughs) I mean, Obviously not the heart pick, right? Because we all know how what we want to happen. But <laughs> but you know, um, if I was like, here's fifty thousand dollars, Lauren, you have to bet it on this, and all of it on one team. They seem to always win the division. So just yeah. with those odds, I would say yes. But at the same time, mm-hmm. like I don't know, people. I've seen predictions saying you know that. You know, they're like World Series favorites, like they are going to win the most games, just like all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. I I don't. I don't know. I don't think they're like, I don't think they're the best team in baseball. Okay, they are one of the best teams in baseball, but. Okay. so who do you think the best team in baseball is? (laughs) Um, oh, man, I don't know. It's not the Dodgers anymore. No. Even when the Dodgers were the best team in baseball, I didn't think they were the best team in baseball, if that makes sense. <laughs> For me, it's just the, the Yankees just have to, like, stop choking. I mean, the Yankees, <laughs> year after year, recently have just, just just fizzled out at the end. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think – I don't know if they're the best, but I think a team that's 
kind of underrated is the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. They have a it's lot a of team. talent. Um, they do. And if they can put it all together, too, I think that they'll be a scary team. Yeah. <laughs> what about the Padres? How are you feeling about the Padres? Um, So they are eventually going to get Tatis back. So that would mm-hmm. that'll be huge mm-hmm. for them. Um, I know Juan Soto has already been dealing with a minor injury. Um, I And I also just have this gut feeling that Machado regresses. I don't know why. I just feel like he's going to regress a little bit. Um, oh, and obviously wow. they, have, they have Xander Bogarts now too. Um, yep. I, I mean, I guess since they made it last year without Tatis, without Bogarts, I mean, they're still going to – still going to do well and the Dodgers took a step back so there is hope for them more hope for them that in that division but the Dodgers are still the Dodgers they're still going to be good they still have Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts Mm -hmm. um yep but I think yeah I think the Padres will if barring you know health uh their players staying healthy their big players staying healthy then I think that they will they'll be a big threat in the National League for sure yeah, I was surprised by uh, Juan Soto. He Juan Soto, you know, it, he didn't play as well once he got to San Diego as I expected. He yeah, kinda, he was another one last year that weird. was like he wasn't on Juan Soto yeah. level. <laughs> no, I mean Juan Soto level was like few baseball players have ever been. You know what we've seen from Juan Soto, and then he got to San Diego and it was it was odd. And it's like I, he's still like only what twenty four. I, li- I think I, yeah, I think he's twenty four years old. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he has so many good years ahead of him, and he's definitely a lock for an MVP at some point. Um. So yeah, if he puts together like a typical Juan Soto season this year too, I mean, then they're they're they'll be in good shape, the Padres. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's so crazy that the local team where I live, the Washington Nationals, you know, they 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 had Harper Soto. They they got rid of Harper to choose Soto and ended up with neither. And you got two generational and Trey know, players. And Trey, it just stinks. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> it just you know, they I don't know how their dynasty. fans are going to deal. <laughs> Uh, it just, I just, that one's just going to just, that knife is just going to keep on. They did get their ring though. You know, with, you know, at the end of the day, they, they get, they, they did get one ring, but you know, they always, you always wonder about dynasty there. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to think of all of the great players they had. (laughs) What a, what a run they had too. It's similar to to the pirates too though. The Pirates had a ton of good players and just let them all go. So, and you think that the Pirates? Oh, go ahead. They could have had like because they used to have Garrett Cole, Joe Musgrove. Like they, they could have assembled a really good team too. But their owner doesn't want to spend. So, (laughs) how's that doing? How's that going? What (laughs) for the for the Pirates? How's that been going? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not good. Not good. I, yeah, <laughs> I feel bad for Pirates fans. The, the the proof is in the pudding, guys. Like, what are we doing here? This is the <laughs> this is the uncapped cat sport. Like, this is this is a competition. Now, the Yankees again they fizzle out, but the Yankees are always in the conversation, in the front of the conversation in the AL. So, whatevs, keep doing the. It's not even like the pirates are really doing money ball stuff though. It's like it's like diet money ball. It's like Yeah, they <laughs> And then, you know, they're trying to um they're trying to extend Brian Reynolds, their center fielder. Um but, but he, why? Why would he do that other than the money? I know ball? he he requested a trade. Um <laughs> but they're still trying to get him to agree to an extension they like. Um I'm like, "Dude, get out." <laughs> Seriously. You know why you can. I mean, 
and th these athletes, I always try to impress it upon people because people will always talk about, oh, this guy, you know, makes so much money. And why is he complaining? You know, if I could make $20 million a year, I would jump on it. It's like, yeah, but what you're, you're not, people aren't understanding when they talk about it like that is like, this is this player's, you know, 10 year window of their career to get paid like this. It's not like they're going to be able to get paid like this in 20 years when they can't play. So they're going to have to bank all the money, invest it well, take care of it well for the rest of their lives. A lot of these people didn't really take high school, college. I mean, not to, you know, with a broad brush, but I know a lot of the guys who are really good at baseball, particularly. They were my friends, me. <laughs> you know, people weren't like, taking their schooling very seriously until yeah. it was until maybe they got to college. And so they haven't really got a real other skill there. You know, some of the guys do great. That's great. It's a great thing, but these, this is their window and okay. Brian Reynolds, you know, he's definitely getting out of there. They're not going to be able to. <laughs> well, and it's like, you know, their ultimate goal yeah. is to win a championship. I mean, like they only have a certain amount of time that, you know, they'll be in their prime and it's like they worked their entire lives for it. So it's like they have to take advantage of it while they can. Um, I imagine it's exactly. very frustrating when you're on a team that won't, you know, won't spend, won't try to, um, you know, make the team better ch or a championship caliber team. Um, for a while, it did seem like the Phillies were that way, but obviously that is not the case because we are one of the top spending teams in the league. Um, so we're actually fortunate to, you know, to, ha to have an owner that wants to spend. And I've criticized John Middleton in the past, but like, at least, you know, he's willing to spend, um, exactly. a lot of owners can't say the same. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, do you think that speaking of, you know, players being stuck places where they're not getting a chance to win, you think Otani, Otani's going to be up next year. You know, think Otani staying in LA? Um, I don't think, well, he could stay in LA, but go to the Dodgers. <laughs> oh, I like that. I know the Dodgers I don't like are, it because they're in the NL, but of course. Well, and if the, the Dodgers will, you know, I, you know, they're, they didn't spend a lot this off season because they want him. Um, Mets fans seem to be convinced that he's going there, which I don't buy it. <laughs> um, I... I am really unsure of where he'll land. I it'll be with you know a kind of you know a like a famous team like a a big market team for sure obviously but it's hard to say. I just got a feeling. I just got a feeling he'll be in pinstripes. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> I think the uh, the one the in Bronx in the Bronx. Really, hmm. I think. Yeah, I, th I think it just, for some reason in my mind, it just fits. I could be totally wrong, but that's my prediction. I mean, you could never count the Yankees out, um, but I don't know. I I'm feeling, I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the Dodgers. That's my prediction. Okay. I'm not. That's a good, it's safe. He doesn't have to move wherever his family lives or he, wherever he lives, he doesn't have to, have to change at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what about Trey, after... Trey Turner? What are you expecting? Um, I mean, I think he, after what he did in the world baseball classic, I mean, he's clearly locked in. Um, and <laughs> I think he's going to have he's going to have a great year, I think. Um and I 100% believe he's breaking the Phillies cycle drought. <laughs> that hasn't been broken since 2004. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a fun fact. So 19 years since the Philly a Philly has hit for the cycle. Yeah, the wow. first year that And then now he's be <laughs> Wow. He, he's now yeah. he's now all those dingers for him to hit in the world baseball classic if he becomes you know a reliable power hitter watch out that those N nl uh uh MV mvp odds are gonna go way up uh for him oh yeah that that would be great i would lo <laughs> love to see that <laughs>
But yeah, you I think, think Nola's going to be back? What? Do you think Nola's going to be back? Oh, yeah. I think Nola's going to be back. I think an extension is not that far away, honestly. Um, oh, great. It would be stupid of the Phillies to not extend him. Um, he's among the top pitchers in the game, even though I think some Phillies fans take him for granted. Um, no question about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think a Nola extension is coming, and he's he's going to be – He's going to be a Philly. And I think, you know, it's funny how like championships, they kind of cloud everything and kind of they they gloss over. They make everything bad. Like there were times where Brian Dawkins as an eagle, you know, suffered and, and had a hard time in coverage. And there were rough times with Iverson and and with Cole Hamels, who I think a lot of people put Aranola in their mind because of like their body styles and, you know, kind of the 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 long brown hair they kind of think Cole <laughs> Hamels but Cole Hamels had rough times I mean oh, yeah. Cole Hamels choked in big I don't <laughs> want to disrespect him but I mean he did he had rough games and big games and I don't think Nola gets a pass it's so weird I don't know why people like like to dunk on Aaron Nola he's him and you know Reese Hoskins are two of those players that People love to like blame everything on, um, but I think the run last year at least helped a little bit to be like, you know, they're capable of competing in these big games and showing up. Um, I know Nola didn't have the best last few outings in the postseason last year, but the bottom Sorry. line is that we wouldn't have been there without him and his no performance the entire year. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, knock him completely because of that. And he had some unreal, he had some rough out uh, innings at any, or they kept him in there too long and he, you know, he got bruised up a bit, but I mean, some of those, innings some of those squares are just perfect i mean he was getting guys out on like four uh retiring the side on five pitches sometimes mm -hmm. like guys go back and watch that that doesn't grow on trees i think so often we like we cross over the line from being passionate and intense and trying to demand a lot from our guys to like being actually ridiculous like guys like watch the sport and see how many guys retire the side in a, <laughs> in a world series on five, five pitches. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And he's always among, you know, the strikeout leaders um, doesn't walk a lot of guys. So, I mean, and it's hard to, you know, find, it's hard to find, you know, elite great starting pitching. And we have, we have two of the best two. guys in the league That's in right. Nola and Wheeler. So do you think that they, they could, that, that Middleton would spend that much to bid for Otani to bring him to Philly? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't see, I don't see Otani coming to Philly. Um, I, I don't know. I think they have, you know, their, franchise player in Bryce Harper and they're sticking with that whereas wherever Otani goes like he's going to be the face of that franchise because he's because he's already the face of the league yes exactly so and I just don't <laughs> I don't see them like kind of putting Bryce Harper out of the spotlight if that makes sense okay I think they committed to him and now they committed to Turner you know, this past off season for 11 years, Harper on 13 years. So I don't think, I don't think it would be a match. But they already have would... a Batman and Robin. They don't need another Batman is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, I would welcome it a hundred percent, but <laughs> I don't think yeah. it would happen. <laughs> yeah. They're there. They've been quite a salary. I mean, then you, you also got Castellanos. Does Castellanos come out of his, la his, his slump from last year? This is another thing I was talking about recently too. Um, I, I honestly, maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I've boiled down his season last year to just a fluke. Like I, I don't think that's who he is. Um, Me either. It's just, 
it's crazy to think like, you know, just in 2021, he had 34 home runs, 100 RBI, you know, was received MVP votes, like was an all-star. I, I just find it hard to believe that he's just, you know, he's not that guy anymore. Um, and at this point, he knows the pressure's on because, you know, Reese being out and Harper not uh, Harper not being back until, you know, middle of the season. So he knows that he has to step up. So hopefully he um, – that motivates him to, you know, kind of return to form. No, I mean, uh, Lindor, when he first got to the Mets, he had a rough year. And yeah, then he, he bounced did. back. Yeah. And I so, think Castellanos might have dealt with a few injuries last year, too. It was just kind of like under wraps. Um, mm. And I, you know, I think Lindor was the same way his first year. Like he was hurt a few times. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. I'm hoping it's just, you know, it had something to do with that. And just, you know, his first year with, you know, a new team, like in a new division. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, he's able to be the Cassianos that we wanted when we signed him. <laughs> He's that, that, that person's still in there. I'm still, a, I'm a Cassianos truther too, man. Me I, too, I, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not giving up on him yet. That's another person that people it's, like you said, he's somebody who's received MVP votes in this very young decade of ours. You don't give up on people like that after one year. Exactly. Yeah. And I just, um, yeah, I just find it hard to believe that he just forgot how to hit. <laughs> no. Yeah, Baseball is like that, though. Baseball yeah. really like that. It's a feel sport. That's why yeah. people can make a run like the Phillies did last year. Yeah, I think a lot of it was mental for him, honestly. I think if he mm -hmm. gets in a better mindset, he should be, you know, he should be doing better. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm hoping that as well. If the Phillies are making another run, let's say, I, I'll go out there and I say I think the Braves are going to win the division again. Phillies are, let's say, transport, you know, six months ahead. Phillies are about to make the, the playoffs, but as a world uh, wild card team again, does dancing on my own make a comeback, or they're going to be? They, you think somebody's going to come up with another one? So I actually read something. Uh, I forget when it was a few months ago that the Phillies themselves said like that's a second place song. So they mm. are ready to you know they're over up, it. Come uh, out with nice. new. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. You know, they're like. They're ready to enter a new era. <laughs> okay, you gotta add the the play back it up because I'll take I'll take second place at a certain point later in the year. I'm okay. I'm not one of these people who are like, if my team didn't win the championship, I would have rather them miss the playoffs. Like I don't understand. Oh. That doesn't compute for me. I don't no. understand sports fans like that. Yeah, no. I mean, I mean. It did stink that like Philly lost two champ. Well, actually, it's like three championships. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, with the Phillies losing, the shout Eagles out to losing. the Union. Yeah, and the Union. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah. that was a lot, but yeah, I mean, the fact that they were there. I mean, would you rather have them not have been there? Like, <laughs> I'll take it every time. Exactly. Me too. Even yeah. though it's painful, but I'll take that pain. <laughs> it's painful to be eliminated from the playoffs in November too. Or uh, if you're a football fan, to have your team eliminated like before, just after the trade deadline or the All Star break, it's it, that's that's painful too to be playing to have a dead man walking team. That's not the problems we had. Yeah, yeah, we almost People, did. We were close. Come on, we prevailed. <laughs> <laughs> but even then we almost got eliminated like it was still we were still playing in september you know it was still like we lived across the finish line but we we got there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> to get into the playoffs well lauren what can we uh look forward to uh to, to hearing and seeing from you so obviously you follow my twitter at philardelphia um i also produce a newsletter called philly's focus um on substack and i also you know as i mentioned in the beginning of the episode i write articles for rotoballer so keep an eye out for all of those things that's 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on and we'll check in soon about the pills. Yeah, go Phils. Go Phils. <laughs>